Today on The Breakfast, uh, Biodu Oyebanji is declared winner of your Progressives Congress governorship primary election in Nikiti State. We look at the issues surrounding the primary and the chances of the party in the forthcoming election. The boys have been separated from the men in the ongoing African Cup of Nations. What should we expect in the upcoming quarterfinals of the tournament? And we have analysis of the headlines from today's national dailies. All these ahead on The Breakfast this morning. It's a beautiful Friday morning and it feels very great to be back on your screen this morning. And usually some people will say, thank God it's Friday. Would oh, you say yeah, that? Yeah, Mercy, you're looking fabulous, by the way. Thank you. I'm and you too. Amazing, amazing. <laughs> Thank you. I feel good already. Yeah. All right. So uh, it promises to be, uh, you know, a great time, two hours of great conversation. And and of course, we'll be delving into Ikiti State, where we'll look at all of the issues surrounding the Ikiti primaries elections, as Ikiti people would decide come June the 18th. As well, we'll also be looking at uh, the AFCON quarterfinals at this point in time, the teams that have actually made it, and what to expect from the game. The entire play so far um, this would be the crux of the conversation as we proceed but as always we will start off with top trending i am messi Bobo, by the way and i'm kofi patels let's uh, go straight to uh, the united arab emirates and of course mercy um the aviation issues between the uae and nigeria have been on well documented for some time now um nigerians and africans generally love to visit the united arab emirates it's a uh, uh, destination for business, a destination for leisure. Uh, families love to go there for vacations. And um, since the coronavirus came, um, you know, countries have been banned from visiting, uh, some countries from visiting the UAE. Um, before that, we had the ongoing issue with uh, air peace. They then issue rather with the air peace um, airline. Well, the recent one is that that travel ban on, on people who had recently visited South Africa, Kenya, Nigeria, uh, Ethiopia, and eight other countries. The news filtered in that the United Arab Emirates is set or was set to lift that ban. Um, we got some information from the National Emergency Crisis uh, and Disaster Emergency Management Authority uh, announcing on Wednesday, that's from UAE, announcing on Wednesday that it was lifting the ban uh, initially imposed on in light of the Omicron variant of the COVID-19, a lot of Nigerians went on social media to express, uh, you know, uh, happiness that uh, this has been effected, you know, because the, the, the criticism was that, um, you know, there was some sort of disparity between uh, African countries and you have uh, the European countries and other countries from other parts of the world when it comes to the ban on traveling to countries like UAE, you know, saying what we've seen, some boys, you know, what we've seen in Africa, in Nigeria in particular, is not as bad as what we've seen in countries like the UK, Spain, Italy, and so on. And so Nigerians should not be stopped from going to Dubai. You know, uh, we love to go to Dubai, don't we? No, why not? We love to go to Dubai. <laughs> why not? So, know, but so. as always, uh, Africa would always be the market. Africa has always been the market. Yesterday, there was a conversation on the micro blogging platform. I don't know if you actually, you know, try to engage, you know, the space on Twitter. It got a lot of conversation going on. Is it with protect the, the tribe? No, yes, secure the tribe. Secure the tribe. Secure the the tribe. Space, yeah. <laughs> no, so it brings us to the fact that, you know, Africa has always been the market. Now, it is a fact that the reason for the, you know, the restriction of African countries, including Nigeria, it wasn't scientific. There were, there were no uh, scientific basis or reason for all of that restriction. If you talk about the Omicron variant, of course, when South Africa actually alerted the international community, the entire world about discovery of this, because it originally did not start from South Africa. It's just that they discovered it there. Now, the fact that they put that out, at the end of the day, it called for a lot of conversation because um, you find out that there were a lot of countries who had cases. There were cases, they had several cases, but they were not placed on that red list or red flag as they put it. And then you had in almost the entire continent 
putting on the red flag. So, but, but for me, is that the reason for changing of the action towards these African countries has not been really stated, and so it calls for a lot of concern. So, um, you begin to ask yourself, so what's the reason right now? And let's not forget that the UAE is also involved with, um, you know, some kind of. Uh, international activity, especially with the war, uh, the missiles and what have you. But like I always say, Africa has always been the market. Some people say that, you know, February is always here. Nigerians are very flamboyant people. Whether or not you want to take it. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, February is here as a period where a lot of people would want to go celebrate. So, yes. You know, for Valentine's Day, right? <laughs> you know, when, when INEC, INEC said they would have the election on, on February 18, some men went like, no, no, it should have been 14. And then Hoshma, is the see, Hoshma, she's, you know, he was also saying that his <laughs> sentence and whatever surrounding his case would yeah. also be on January the 14th. Oh, my, that my. A lot of but, but, you know, interestingly, the, the choice of countries, you know, that where the focus on of this UAE ban, you know, you have uh, Kenya, Tanzania, Ethiopia, you have Nigeria, the Republic of Congo, uh, South Africa, Botswana, Eswatini, uh, Lesotho, Mozambique, Namibia, and Zimbabwe. Um, these are African countries, you know, and um, uh, Africans who always raise the issue of marginalization. Why us? You know, we're not, we're not even near the figures from the other parts of the world. Yeah. Why us? Um, uh, you know, but as to, as to, and this covered people who travel to those countries. So even if you're not a citizen of those countries and you travel there, you were prevented from entering the UAE. But the reasons you asked, of course, and um, well, we, maybe we can just hazard a guess that in Nigeria, with um, Lagos State declaring the end of the fourth wave, uh, and the spike maybe going down, it may have contributed because they're no, watching these no, things. You know? No, no. So, so we can just jump and go to the end. That's the point. First of all, the reason you put out that restriction on Nigeria and all the countries, there was no justification for all of that, and that's why the outcry was loud. Because if you look at, you know, the restriction, it somehow felt like it was becoming, you know, a marginalization issue, an issue of, you know, race and all of that. Because at the time, we could see that there were countries that had more cases of COVID-19, the European countries, and they were not put on that list. And that's why the question came up. At that time, Nigeria was talking about two cases or thereabout. So it really didn't make a lot of sense to a lot of people. There was no justification, scientifically and otherwise. And that's why the question is there. And I am asking, so what is the rationale? Because that hasn't been stated, that you lift the band. What has changed? Because prior to this time, it wasn't that, you know, there was a boss, however, before you took the decision. And so if the, the you know, the, the Lagos state government, Lagos is just one state out of the entire country. No, yeah, yeah. So you're right, I don't know if you, I don't, I don't the if you get it. The from the, the um, NCDC are published online and are accessible to anyone, anywhere in the world, as far as you have an internet connection. No. So, so, so the, 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 the figures generally in the country have been uh, steadily declining. So maybe, I'm just hazarding a guess, maybe... You know, they, they might look at these things to say, okay, we can now relax. I don't know. We don't know. So, so I'm also thinking that it could also come from, you know, the fact that you have uh, Boris Johnson with all of that policy, uh, the, the liberality with COVID-19 protocols in the United Kingdom. Uh, so that might also be it. But however, I always know that Africa is the market and uh, Nigeria is a very big market. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Interesting. Well, um, for those who want to travel to the UAE, um, you can now start making packing your bags, basically. <laughs> um, let, let's move on. Um, yesterday, uh, Fashola, uh, Governor Babatunde Fashi, or former Governor Babatunde Raji Fashola of Lagos State, who is now the Works and Housing uh, Minister, uh, was, was, was trending as well. It's a trending story where he is said to have um, um, uh, claimed that President Buhari has done more than the United States government has done in terms of infrastructure since 2015 and um, he had not even put his mic down you know they say off the <laughs> mic he had not even put his microphone down and nigerians jumped on this matter oh my god no 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 nigerians jumped on it someone says that um uh, you know since fashala went into the administration um, um he has lost focus you know a lot of things like that but what what the minister was saying was that um you know, President Buhari has done what the U.S. is trying to do in terms of uh, infrastructure. Um, he was at he was at an APC event. Um, this was a uh, in Kano State. Uh, it's a series, you know, a series. Uh, 
of the party, an initiative to create awareness on its achievements in the last seven years. So he was a speaker there. He said, and I quote, let's just take a quote from him. I tell people that infrastructure is the most legitimate way to distribute money in the economy from the top to the bottom. Uh, from six years ago, the, this government led by President Buhari, uh, as far as infrastructure is concerned, has been doing what the United States government is still trying to do. They, in the US, are still trying to pass their infrastructure bill and they are still fighting. Um, so he said, as at December 2021, uh, the federal government had completed 941 kilometers of roads across all the states and the geopolitical zone. Um, so so it, it, people need to you know, understand the context of what the person is saying and look at the text of what the person said before jumping on their back. Um, it's clear from the quote that he says, let me go back. He didn't say that America has done more or has more infrastructure than, than Nigeria has more infrastructure than America or that Buhari has built more infrastructure. Uh, but what he said is that um, what the Americans are trying to do in terms of infrastructure, um, they've been trying to, for the past few years, Buhari has been doing it consistently. You know, mercy. So people jumped on it and said, you know, you can't just compare. Yes, because, you know, the law of comparison does not allow you to compare things that are not on the same pole. And so it would just be okay to compare things on the same pole, which is just natural. If you want to compare, the same pole would mean you compare, if you say Nigeria and Ghana is fair, we are in the same region, <laughs> we are Africans, uh, that's actually fair. Because um, you also want to look at the issue of how, you know, the kind of system of government that they practice. Mm -hmm. A lot of road infrastructure and all of the infrastructures are within the poor view of the states and city government. And not necessarily on the, I don't know, so you have the states having uh, serious control. Now you also want to talk about the maintenance culture. Uh, the maintenance culture is not what we have here. So even with that comparison, I'm sure that that probably would be the reason a lot of Nigerians are jumping on the bike and they don't even want to pay attention because you say, you know, President Muhammad the Buhari has built more infrastructure than the U.S. government. That, that's a lot, you know, to begin to decipher. Because when you talk about critical infrastructure, you ask yourself, um, we want to look at the roads across the entire field. Till today, we're still talking about the Calabar Itu Road, which is under the poor view of the federal government. That's the Trunk A Road. And what has happened? We remember in 2015, there were a lot of pictures that were online showing that that road has been, you know, was budgeted for, you know, what work has done. Go to Calabar to road. If you are supposed to travel from Calabar to Uyo, it's not supposed to take about one hour. Prior to this time, an hour should take you to Uyo, one hour, 30 minutes. But that's not the case. People spend four hours, five hours, six hours. So it, 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 it doesn't really add up. So even if you have in the books that government has made budgets, we want to look at the reality. That's what we're talking about. How does that trend? So it's okay to begin to say, yes, this is what we budgeted for. It has been, how can you travel from Lagos to Abuja via road and, and okay, confess so that you, that's a smooth road? You're talking about the, 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 the reality, the impact. The, the no, we're, we're, we're looking at the reality now. Okay. And, and, and that's what Nigerians will always talk about. So it goes beyond the books. The, 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 it's time for, I think it's time for the fact checkers to, to get to work, you know, and to try and do some analysis and see, you know, what is, what is, um, uh, the truth and not the truth. But but I, I have a, a chart in front of me here. I don't know if we can display that. It, it, it shows, like um, you said, Mercy, uh, that the local governments and the, the state governments spend more um, than the federal government of the United States of America. They run a similar system to the Nigerian uh, system of governance, but they run uh, what Nigerians would call true, democ true uh, federalism. Even though some would argue that uh, there's nothing like true federalism because federalism is federalism. But um, if you look at a chart, I have a chart, if I'm just going to look at that. Uh, you have the spending uh, on local operation and maintenance. You have, um, you know, uh, when they build these infrastructures, how they operate this infrastructure, sorry, and how they maintain this infrastructure, they spend on that. You have the... Um, capital spending by the local governments, that is local governments in America and uh, the, the state governments in America. Now that, for the past, um, uh, since from 2007 to 2017 was higher than what the federal government spent as far as capital spending is concerned on infrastructure in America. So whilst the um, state governments, let's, we're talking about 2015 to 2021. Uh, uh, from 2015 to 2017 in America, uh, there was a steady decline 
in government spending on infrastructure. In fact, the Americans, uh, the story has been that um, uh, the, uh, so we're looking at this, if you look at this, the, the, the screen, the, the chart in front of you, you can see that from 2017 backwards, um, the American federal government spent less on infrastructure. This is in transportation, the one in green. Whilst the one in blue is the state and local government spending on infrastructure, that is from 2007, 2017. You can see that it is, is significantly higher than what the uh, federal government spends. So it just says that, you know, in America, you have the state spending and you have the local spending. And you can't just take what the state, the local federal government is spending and say, oh, this is what the entire country is spending. You can see the spending on... Um, uh, water, for instance, water infrastructure, you can see in blue, those are the local governments and the state governments, very higher than what the federal government in America is spending in green, which is below. So if we take, or the minister takes what's been happening on the federal scale, you understand, on the federal scale alone in America, it will not be correct. You can see that the local governments are spending, the state governments are spending way higher than the federal government, yes. And the next one, you can see the two green lines are the real spending uh, in terms of capital expense expenditure for the federal and then the state governments. The one in green, rather, the one in green is federal capital spending in the middle, in the middle. The one in blue in the middle is a local capital spending. You can see it's lower. Um, from 2015, 2017, it's an average of 70, million, $70 billion spent by the federal government, okay? $70 billion. Now, if you look at if you look at seventy billion dollars spent between twenty fifteen and twenty seventeen, what has Nigeria that, that what has Nigeria spent you know coming from the federal government in terms of capital expenditure? This is expenditure on infrastructure. We go to the the budget figures from twenty fifteen, which by by the way was not a, a Buhari budget, but from twenty fifteen it was Okonjo Wella who signed who presented up you know signed the budget. Um, um, who superintended over that budget. From 2015, Nigeria's CAPEX, capital expenditure, has been this, uh, 633 billion naira in 2015. In 2016, Nigeria spent uh, or 1.59 trillion. That was the, the budget that was passed, 1.59 trillion in capital expenditure. In 2017, um, the budget passed had an, a capital expenditure figure of 2.1 trillion naira, significant increase. In 2018, it was 2.87 trillion naira. In 2019, it was 2.09 trillion naira. In 2020, it was 2.47 trillion naira. And in 2021, it was uh, 4.125 trillion naira. Now, if you compare all these amounts of money or for all these years, let's just take one year, either 2015, uh, 20, between 2012 and 2015, uh, sorry, 2015 and 2017 in America, if they had an average of 70 billion naira from the, the chart we showed, 70 billion dollars, okay? What does that 70 billion dollars amount to in naira? We're looking at 29.084 trillion naira, 29.084 trillion naira spending each year, 2015, 2016, 2017 average, which means that, you know, for 2018, 2019, and 2020 to be around that figure. If you look at the year, Lee capital expenditure on infrastructure by the US federal government, not state now, not local, federal government, average of 29 billion trillion naira, you can see that it trumps what America and Nigeria has. It trumps what Nigeria has. If you add all the years since Buhari came into power, you know, together, it still will not meet up to one year of US federal spending so on Co capital expenditure. So Kofi, you and I are saying the same thing, but you know, maybe in different languages. That's what we're saying. I mentioned earlier on that the principle of comparison does, says that you, sh you should have to compare things that are on like poles, and that's number one. I also talked about the system of government. If you talk about the United States, they, they practice a system where all of this infrastructure, you have the state, and you have actually shown that. Uh, you have the state previewing, uh, having control over that. So states and local, local cities local kind of government system. And that's not what's very common with Nigeria. So even if you want to even say that the Nigerian government is spending so much as against the United States government, let's talk about the reality. Let's also talk about some of the practices. Mm. And no, we're not I'm, saying I'm that saying they're not spending even as much. If you add all the, the, um, uh, the capital expenditure from 2015 to 2019, will it amount to what Americans spent in one year? That's the federal government, you, which you, is you, you, 29 you, trillion naira. 
or about 70 billion naira you know by by, by the, a city like yeah, california will you know. be spending currently on her project twice more than what nigeria mm -hmm. is but, but, spending. But, 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 but at the, the time you yeah. also want to yeah that's what i'm saying i'm saying you also want to agree with me that you know at the time you also have the uh, donald trump uh a one trillion dollar uh infrastructure project at the time when he was president and you want to compare that with how much now we're looking at 400 i mean f uh one trillion dollar is over four trillion naira nigeria's budget from 2022 to today is half of that so it still brings us I'm just saying that first of all that comparison was not necessary I feel like sometimes we need to just do what we have to do without necessarily making all of those comparisons. It is really totally because at the end of the day, uh, you begin to just pitch yourself against yourself that's mm. what it is uh, you I, begin to look at yeah. for all of those the system of government that they practice, you have mentioned, it's, we say in Nigeria that uh, we're, look, we're talking about true federalism. That's what they're, they're practicing. But there's really nothing in the lexicon like true federalism. We're talking about true federalism because Nigeria's not practicing that system. A system where state government has, you know, some kind of control, the spending and expenditure is quite different. And this is, you know, at the federal level. Then you want to ask yourself, I am asking, typical of the federal trunk A road, which the one, I'm not going to talk about what I don't know. I will talk about what I know, the Calabai to road. Since 2015, we saw a lot of pictures on the internet. We saw, uh, you know, at that 2015, oh, the roads were commissioned and all of that. Please, practically, anyone can tell me, I stand to be corrected here. Tell me what the state of the Calabar Itu Road is as at this point in time. Mm. So before we just wake up and begin to make some of this statement because we want to appraise ourselves, I mean, we, we, we were talking about facts here. When we say that uh, Nigeria had recovered from recession, we're saying how does that translate to the standard of living of the people? The people need to feel it. So it, it goes beyond the papers and all of yeah, that. You, you, you made an important point. You talked about one trillion naira. Um, it's, it's, it's one trillion dollar. dollars. Sorry. Um, and uh, I think um, uh, Minister Fashola has been watching in a lot of TV and he's been seeing a lot of what's been happening you know, on CNN and other channels, maybe even plus TV Africa as we report these things on our world news. But um, that, that, uh, you know, that, that issue with, the, with, the, with the, um, the federal infrastructure plan or bill um, the, the, the Democrats and Republicans finally came to an agreement, and the bill was passed in November 2021. $1 trillion, it's a landmark spending over the next few years. You know, so he, he's not right when he says they are still trying to fight, or they are fighting and still trying to pass the bill. They have already passed that bill, and it's $1 trillion naira and dollars, rather, and Nigeria doesn't spend even half of that. And you I'm know, just so, saying that if yes, you even yes. also look at the culture of maintenance, it's just real. Go to the roads. Let's not talk about the roads that are within the purview of the state. Let's talk about the trunk A roads. How far are they faring? It's, it's a question. Mm -hmm. Tell me. Mm -hmm. You know, but, 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 but before we move on, we must also um, understand him in a way um, that uh, President Buhari has spent uh, not about 8.9 trillion naira over the past few years in infrastructure and a lot of things we don't have time to talk about you know but we'll look for another day to talk about this one mercy um the the rumors of of uh, uh reports of a police helicopter crash somewhere in bauchi state and of course the um the police public relations officer force public relations officer coming out to to deny um, that there was a, a crash of a police um helicopter saying that uh, what happened was there was a controlled landing uh, with a rotor uh, of the rotor blade of the helicopter uh, being damaged uh, when the, the, the police heavy helicopter was trying to land in Bauchi State, uh, they realized, the pilot realized that um, uh, there was a, a problem with the, um, with the landing lights at the airport and so they had to do what you call a controlled landing. Um, so, you know, it, 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 it brings into light the, the, um, the way people or we in the media rush to to share stories, you understand? For instance, this one now of Fashola. Fashola didn't say Nigeria spends more than the United States. He was saying that we, we, we're doing what the United States has been trying to do over these years. We should have reported it rightly. But the, I'm the just same, saying that. Way, I'm, I'm just this, saying that. Yeah, the same way with this helicopter crash as well, uh, or alleged helicopter crash, we should have reported it properly that it was a controlled landing, which is what the first public relations officer said, and not a crash. And it's just simple. If we still have to go back to the issue of the Fashola case, I, I really do not see any news in the fact that the police debunked the helicopter crash in Bauchi. It's it's it, it, so if the helicopter actually the police helicopter crash in Bauchi, is there anything wrong with that? It happens. We have seen several crashes anywhere. I mean, who is going to hold your account? These things happen. Even if you, there was an imminent attack, 
So I just kind of feel like we have, we have boxed ourselves to a situation where we constantly feel like there has to be some sort of perfection. And now when we talk about, um, you know, making reference to all of that, uh, talking about, you know, Fashola and the statement that he made, I'm just saying that when you begin to pitch yourself against what you're not supposed to pitch yourself, it puts you out there because you begin to consider the system of government, you consider other factors. Now, the police, this is not the first time, I mean, over time you hear that if a report is being given out, for instance, the corruption index that we talked about, the Nigerian government will come out and say, oh no, um, that's not the case. And so what is wrong if, you, if that's the case? It's okay. I mean, you're not the only country, you know, in that particular spot. So for me, the, the helicopter didn't yeah, crash. Yeah, what, what if the what, helicopter what, what, crashed? What I'm saying is um, that, you know, the, the, the media should report adequately, um, but we have to move on, you know. Um, let's, let's, let's go on. We have um, analysis of the latest from the National Dailies up next right here on Plus TV Africa. Please stay with us. We'll be right back.